right, all you drinkers across America following me, Ron Antonori and Drinking Across America, we are here at Omaha Brewing Company in Omaha, Georgia with the founder, Robert E. Lee. We just call him Doc because you'll find out in a little while why he's got the nickname Doc. And we are at the small town known for their big beers. And let's go ahead and find out from Doc here, you know, what got you interested in the craft beer industry? Actually, when I first started, I didn't drink beer at all. Um, I and my wife decided we wanted to retire a few years ago. We lived in Atlanta, had a very large dental practice up there, but this has always been home for me. And we had decided when our last child, our son, graduated from high school, we were going to move back here. Uh, I had already built a dental office here for me to work part-time in from Atlanta. Yeah. And one day I just, uh, we originally, we decided we were going to move and circumstances in life happened and we decided to open a winery to begin with. We had been to Sonoma and Napa a lot and my father used to make wine way back when. My father passed away several years ago, but he made wine in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. Okay. And, um, it's interesting. I actually helped bottle wine when I was six and seven years old. I That's still have cool. original bottle capper. We'd take Coca-Cola bottles and wash them out and mm. fill them with wine. That's cool. But we, um, we decided to open a winery, so we wanted to do something to create jobs for our kids, kind of to leave a legacy, literally. And that was going to be a winery. So we planted an acre of grapes, and then we planted 10 more acres of grapes, and we went on vacation. And on the way home, we were coming by. There's a, a flowing well up here. It's um, where water just constantly comes out of the ground. It has ever since before I was born. And I looked at it, and we came by, and I said, that's going to be the name of our first beer. And my wife looked at me, and she said, beer? What are you talking about? I thought we was opening a winery. I said, oh, I meant to tell you about this. She said, oh, God, what is it now? I said, well, you know, I, I think it only takes about two weeks to make a beer. And I said, it takes, you know, you only get one crop a year when you make wine. I said, yeah. if we're going to do something for our, truly for our family and our community, I said, this was 2012. This was in the early parts of, of 12. And I said, if we're really going to do this, a winery is just not going to create that many jobs. Yeah. And a brewery would. Breweries really taken off in Georgia in 2012. So we started doing our research, spent a lot of time reading and visiting local breweries like Sweetwater and uh, Red Hair and um, Red Brick, which is now yeah. Atlanta Brewing Company. Yeah. Uh, Those Maddie. are all favorites of mine. I've yes, been sir. drinking Sweetwater since. They started in the early mid 90s uh, right. when I lived in Atlanta. I, I got started off on Sweetwater Blue. They're that's good guys. always been my favorite beer and hope, hoping to make it up there pretty soon. They're, and, uh, they're good people too. They, they, they are, they are. They've worked hard for a long time and really opened up the craft of Georgia. Yeah. So. They did, they, I mean, because when they opened up, it was like, it was only them. They were, right. they were it for the longest time. And when I left Atlanta in 97 and started traveling around the country, I talked their praises from Atlanta to Hollywood, California, to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, telling everyone, you got to try this Sweetwater Brewery, man. Sweetwater Blue, 420, you know, you would love it. And I've been an ambassador of theirs like that for years. And I'm the same way with Omaha Brewing for the last two and a half years since I moved up here and uh, first tried your beers. Uh, they definitely are. Uh, I can see where you get the small town big beer uh, name because they are big in flavor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we definitely have a are. Very wide variety. We have a lot of different styles. We try to cover the gamut for everybody. Yeah. Um, it's funny, it comes out, we have anywhere from as little as 12 beers on tap to as many as 30 beers on tap for a special event. Wow. So when somebody That's comes in awesome. and say, I want a stout, or we want a sour, or we want a Hefeweizen, or we want an IPA, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or we want an Irish Red. We try to make styles to fit everybody. We're we're in the middle of nowhere, so if they're going to drive this far out here, we want to yeah. make sure they're happy and have exactly. a good time. And because not everybody likes IPAs, uh, right. contrary to what most breweries want to think nowadays. Uh, you know, not everybody is into the IPA flavor or the sour craze that's starting to come up and kind of pushing IPAs to the side now. We've got the sour craze now. And 
uh, it's always good to go somewhere where you've got blondes, you've got lagers, you've got Hefweizens, you've got your stouts, you've got your IPAs. You know, a little bit, like you said, a little bit of everything. And I see, uh, what's this that you're drinking? This uh, is actually, uh, the, name, the actual name is Island Rain. This is our hard water. It's a hard sparkling water. Okay. It's a 4% alcohol. It's gluten-free, zero carbs, zero sugars. It's got 78 calories. Wow. And it's got lots of flavor. We have spent, you know, a year, a little over a year in research and development. Mm -hmm. uh, we released it back in late May and uh, okay. started putting it in cans in June. Uh, our first flavor was coconut and lime, and it's just taken off yeah. like nuts. And our second one yeah. is what I'm drinking here. This is, a, this is the actual owner of the brewery here. This yeah. Is, this is Bentley. So I had to come make make this make is his appearance. This is Bentley. He's the, the had to make his appearance. We call him the dog father. So <laughs> has to make his he appearance. Has to of watch course, over everything. But yeah, this is our hard water that's done very very yeah. well. The sales pace in hard waters is just gone nuts. I have tried the coconut lime, and um, like I was saying, when I the first time I tried it, I'm a bartender. That um, that would be good to use as a mixer for Absolutely. like in mojitos. A mojito, you know, you got a coconut lime mojito. Use that instead of regular club soda. That's um, right. You know, so I'm, I was you know, talking to, talking about uh, maybe bringing in some into where I work at, and we actually are one of the few breweries or few people that make a hard sparkling water that will sell it on draft. Also, oh, you do sell so it on we draft. Do sell it on draft, and okay. we have a lot of people that we, it goes very, very well with a shot of vodka. Mm -hmm. It also goes really well with a shot of coconut uh, rum. Yeah. And also, or a shot of tangerine. It makes a fantastic light mixed okay. drink. Not, yeah. Still don't have a lot of calories, but we got a lot of flavor. Yeah. And one of the cool things I found out, Kenny Chesney is one of my favorite singers. Mm -hmm. So I drank Blue Chair Bay, some of his rum. Uh, I'm actually a huge fan of Ritson rum, which is one of my uh, very, very good friends are in our community here. Mm -hmm. um, but Blue Chair Bay makes a liqueur or a cream, and it's called Key Lime Cream. And oh. we take that and put a shot in the bottom of the glass and pour it with Island Rain, and mm -hmm. it makes it into like a slice of Key Lime Pie. Ooh. It almost solidifies, and it's fantastic. I have so got to try that. It's awesome. Because I'm a big fan of Key Lime Pies, and uh, back when I started bartending, uh, one of the first drink shots that I was would uh, fell in love with was called a Key Lime Pie. And it tasted just like one, man. The, the liquors that it was used to make it, I mean, you didn't taste anything but key lime pie, and you yeah. would just drink them and drink them, and, drink, and then they hit you. And you're like, oh, whoa, that's got alcohol in it. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, the, uh, the definitely the hard seltzer craze is starting to kick it's along because really a lot in. of people like something that's more refreshing, low calorie, it's and, low calorie and, and then it and helps with can, the gluten free as you can well. You drink four or five and you don't feel like you're just about to be bloated. And yeah. You know, a lot of the, guy, the guys even, you know, everybody's like, well, that's a girl's drink. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, because yeah. I see all these guys on, on the golf course and yeah. you go in any Publix or Kroger, you know, mm -hmm. people in line, two yeah. thirds of the people that's walking out of there has got White Claw yeah. or Truly. Or, yeah, because that's why I said I would rather, you know, recommend a local brew to people that are into the White Claw or, you know, the other hard seltzers that right. are out there now. You know, I always try to go local with people. You know, they come in to where I work. Well, you know, I, what kind of beer? Give me a beer. Well, what do you like? Well, I like Bud Light. Okay, well, we don't have anything like that on tap, but we've got this that's a little bit close to it. You know, I'm sure you like it. Give you a sample. Oh, yeah, I like that. It is good. And start turning them onto some craft beer. You know, right. pull them away from the big boys into the craft uh Industry and that was the that was the premise behind making Nat Knocker. Nat Knocker is a German lager. Okay. So many people come in here that are looking for they don't well we don't know what we want. It's just a craft beer place. We don't really drink craft beer. What what mm -hmm. we ask them what do you like? Well we're usually yeah. drinking a Corona or a Nick Ultra or something. I said well the lightest thing we got is going to be Nat Knocker, mm -hmm. and it's a true German lager and it's super light and super smooth and yeah. like yeah I like that and. Now that we've got the hard water, it's amazing how many people come in. Like, we don't drink beer. I said, well, do you drink Truly or White Claw? Well, yeah, that's all I drink. Like, Hold on just a minute. They're like, yeah, yeah, I ain't buying that again ever. This is what yeah. I want now. And this I would is. recommend what I'm, it's the uh, the Blackberry Watermelon uh, Ale, Blonde? Yeah. It's a Blonde. Yeah, the Blackberry Watermelon Blonde. Yeah. Uh, very, very good Blackberry and Watermelon. I mean, it doesn't even taste like beer. It's a very good, flavorful 
uh, blonde. That's one of my uh, it falls along devices. the lines of the Sweetwater Blue. Yeah. You know, it's it's the beer that brings out the flavor of the berries and the fruit and the melon instead of the beer flavor. And and I like that, especially in the summertime. You're in the South. You know, you want something light. You want something refreshing, like a hard <coughs> seltzer or like a fruit flavored blonde or right. you know something that's going to quench your thirst. I also noticed up there a couple uh, tea loggers that I am going to have to have to give a try of. Uh oh, I guess uh, I've got the Bentley, got, you, got got the owner's buddy, uh, uh, thing of approval. You think you just going? <laughs> you don't want to make He's sure like, well, that you get left out well, of the TV show. Wants to make show? sure that he gets uh, right there in the middle of the shot. <laughs> 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 got to make his presence known. Says yes, I'm the beer dog. <laughs> Bentley, he's the he's he's the dog father around here. So, mm. so you looking for something to eat? I don't have any treats. I have no treats today. You have to go he's going to give you a beer he that you can't refuse. We, we, yeah. <laughs> he knows that we have treats for the dogs when they come in, so he's wanting somebody to give him a treat. Oh, you're going to act all good so you get a treat, huh? That is a lot of fun. You may see 20 or 30 dogs in here and yeah. 20 or 30 kids in here, along with a couple hundred adults. Yeah. So now, that's the cool fun. thing about the craft breweries. You know, they're family-friendly, pet-friendly, family-friendly. You can bring the whole family, on, mom, dad, the kids, grandma, grandma. Pap, you know, bring the dogs with you come and come out and enjoy the day, you know, and that's what craft beer is all about, making new friends and, you know, it's bringing your old friends down and hanging out and, you know, just enjoying the experience. And we have a lot of fun with it. We, my wife and I, we started the brewery again for, you know, for our family, for our community. We're the poorest community in the state of Georgia. We're about the fifth poorest county in the, in the country. Uh, wow. We're the third largest employer in the county, and that's behind an ICE detention center and a school system. So, <laughs> so that's good. And we employ, I think, 19 people here. Yeah. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it makes a huge yeah. impact in this county. You know, so. and, and how big is the uh, town of Omaha? Do About you? 100 to 102 people, unless it's Saturday and the brewery's full of people. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and actually, Omaha, back in the 1800s, was the 10th largest city in the state of Georgia. Really? Back wow. because of the cotton trade and the plantation. Oh, yeah, being right here. Yeah, I was going to say right you on know, the river. The and cotton, would they load up on barges and ship it to Columbus to the mills, and that's where yeah. they would um, run it through the mills and make fabric and send it all over the world, or just send cotton all over the world Yeah. from there. It was a huge, huge, huge um, industry back in the 1800s. In the early 1900s, everything kind of crashed. And yeah. you know, we used to have a movie theater, actually, uh, a couple of hotels and just thousands of homes all around everywhere. And wow. To this day, you go out in the woods and you'll find an old house place that was from the 1800s. It's kind of run down. Had a brick yeah. factory. So occasionally in Columbus, and especially here, you'll find a brick stamped Omaha, Georgia in it. So it's huh. a cool thing That's interesting. to be able to find. It closed down during the Depression. Yeah. So. So, uh, what's the history of this, the brewery here? I know that it wasn't of course, always a brewery. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so when Stephanie and I decided to open a brewery, we incorporated on 12, 12, 12. And then in 2013, I got a phone call. This place was for sale. We own most of the property around it. This was kind of a corner, it's eight acres. Mm -hmm. This used to be uh, an old African-American school, uh, elementary school. If you look down through here, you can see the openings in the wall with the classrooms. Huh. So. It was built in the late 40s, around 49 or 50, and then it closed in 1970 when integration happened here. Okay. So the kids were shipped off to a school an hour and 45 minutes away by bus. That's and ridiculous. they closed it down. And about 10 years later, uh, the school board gave the building and the eight acres to a guy to open a factory to create jobs here. And the government gave him a grant and he retrofitted into a factory and he made uh, fluorescent light fixtures and some type of electrical connectors. Uh, the name of the company was FlexTech for the military. Okay. And he kept it open until I think around 2002. And so when we bought it, it had been closed for 10 or 12 years. And uh, it looked kind of like something out of The Walking Dead. It was pretty abandoned and yeah. nobody would come in. Our employees were like, we're not going in there. Ain't no way. It's, <laughs> it was pretty scary. Spooky looking. It was. And my wife has transformed this definitely. She mm -hmm. walked in and she said, I know exactly what it's going to look like. And it's, it's still a work yeah. in progress. 
Yeah. Uh, we actually opened, started selling beer in Columbus in July of 2014. We started brewing recipes in 13. Okay. And then started going to shows in 14. Uh, we were the 25th brewery to open in the state of Georgia. Huh. We were number 25. That's cool. Nice number. It was. Uh, now there's close yeah, to 70. Yeah, countless so, more just over the last few years. Oh, and, yeah. And there, there's another 40 or 50 on the boards to yeah. open in the next Yeah, two years. they always, I mean, they're popping up left and right. They are. They are. We were, yeah. the only, we were the first one in South Georgia. There's some other breweries, and they're all friends of ours. You know, you got Wild Leap just north of Columbus yeah. in Lagrange. You have um, Southern Brewing in Valdosta. You got Pretoria Fields down in Albany. They're all yeah. they're great people. They yeah. all are. Yeah, they got some good beers and too. That's one of the things I enjoy about being in the craft industry is everybody doesn't mind helping each other. It's not. Exactly. I mean, we're no. Are we competitors? Of course we are, but we don't look at each other that way. Yeah. We're not. We're a community also. We're a community and we, everybody, yeah. I mean, if I'm out of hops or something, I, I can send an email out and I'll get 20 responses. No, I got yeah. over here, come get it. Or they'll yeah. come to me and say, I need so-and-so. Mm -hmm. You know, we raise muscadines. We got 26 acres of grapes and we give several breweries in the state muscadines so they can make a variation of a muscadine beer. Yeah. We make two different ones, but yeah. we've got friends. They're like, man, we'd like to do this. Come on, you gonna pick them, I ain't. Yeah, exactly. Come on, get them. <laughs> Yeah, so I was saying, I noticed you got uh, grapes or muscadines that's growing it. also to uh, like said, still original, wanting to do the wine? We do. Or? We do. We're probably about two years out. We're, okay. we're waiting on the, the vines to mature, which they're getting really, really close. I mean, we basically will make, in the state of Georgia, you can make 200 gallons uh, legally without having a, a license. So, mm. you know, several of us get together and make some wine and just have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Uh, we'll have... Uh, foot stomping wine making here <laughs> Labor Day weekend. We always okay. have a peaking Labor Day. Have a lot of fun cool. with that. But eventually we'll open the winery here. Across the highway here, we've got 35 acres and we're going to build an event center okay. the winery. Put an outdoor stage for music there. Yeah. And that'll be the tasting room for the winery there. Okay. So hopefully in about two years. Well, somewhere between 18 months and 36 yeah. months. That's cool. Definitely going to have to uh, come down and check that out then. Uh, that's another thing I want to get into is uh, not just breweries with the craft beer, but also the local wineries, distilleries, mm -hmm. and, you know, because there's several of them, you know, within a 30 yeah. mile radius of here. You, you know, you got Richland here, you got uh, Swamp, Fox. Swamp Fox. There's um, John Edwards up in Opelika. Yep. Uh, they also have Rest, Resting Pulse and Red Clay Brewing Company they do. up They're there. They do. They're good folks. Yeah. Yep. And you've got, you know, a big winery down at Steel Pond, who is also a distillery. They make a fantastic Ooh. vodka from yeah. their Muscadines, 229 vodka, which is our ear code. Okay. Um, you've got Swamp Fox, like you said, in Buena Vista, is pretty mm -hmm. new, and he's, he's coming out gangbusters. And you've got Richland Rum that's been around since 99, and they're sold, you know, all over the Caribbean. They're sold yeah. a lot of places, and their, their rums are Fantastic. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to uh, make a trip down there and sample that Gorgeous out sometime. Gorgeous facility, and the rum is just incredible. Uh, it's the the only rum that I like just to get a piece of ice and pour over it and drink it. And see yeah, it. It's, just it's, sip it's fantastic. It. They're the only distillery, rum distillery, in the United States that is farm to table. They raise all their own sugar cane, they crush huh. their own sugar cane, wow. and they only use their sugar cane juice to make mm -hmm. to syrup they don't use any of the, the molasses and that kind of stuff yeah. that a lot of the, the still and i know use. you guys have uh, corroborated oh with yeah them we do we, on, uh, we use a lot of two barrels beers and uh and we use some of their syrups they make a fantastic almost it's called almost rum mm -hmm. uh, syrup and which is sold all over the world sell a lot of it in new york and restaurants and stuff they used to cook with it there that's cool and we use some of the syrup, we use some of their barrels to age beer in, and mm -hmm. they're, it's a good, good, and same thing yeah. with Swamp Fox, we do the same thing yeah. with Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's, because I can remember uh, moving down, down to the area, well, up in Smith Station, Phoenix City, Columbus area of Alabama, Georgia, back in 83, and talk about Opelika having a distillery and two breweries. I can remember back in 83, it was dry. Was you couldn't say, buy a beer in that yeah. town, let alone make beer. You couldn't yeah. buy whiskey or 
vodka, let alone make it. That's right. And, you know, the way it came in the last 35, 36 years, when I moved back and my parents took me up there to Opaline, they're like, Ron, you're not going to believe this. There's a brewery and a distillery, because this was before Resting Pulse opened. And they're like, there's a brewery and distillery in Opelika. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You got to show you. No, no. They took me down there, showed me. I was like, man, I can't, you know, I can remember when it was dry. And now, not only can they brew it, they've got a whole entertainment district, which is like a mini New Orleans, where you can walk around in the entire area. So uh, I'm definitely, we're definitely going to be making a trip up there to Opelika and uh, filming a few episodes with uh, Red Clay and Resting Pulse and John Emerald in the future. So I uh, definitely want to stay, stay tuned for that. That'd be a lot of fun yep. to do. Uh, well, uh, I know, I know I'm know. i interested in uh, taking a little tour of the brewery and seeing how the magic's made. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Go ahead. The brewers uh, are done brewing for the day, so we, we right. can go through and I can show you the equipment and show you where it's made and give you a little, right. uh, short synopsis of the process. Right. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. All right. Sounds so good. So stay tuned. Pop open your favorite beer, pour a glass of wine, mix up your favorite beverage, and stay tuned for Drinking Across America as we come back after this. Don't buy boo boo. This oh, is what we call the pilot brew house. We, uh, this was used to be the old, the old uh, auditorium. Okay. And lunch room. So now it's basically just where we clean kegs, keep some of our barrels where we barrel age stuff. Uh, we keep extra cans and stuff in here, but we used to brew on this small system of 45 gallons. When we first started, we were using a little 10 gallon system, and then we went to 45 gallons. And then when we sold our practice in Atlanta, we went to a 1,000 gallon system. Wow. Because in, in those days, you didn't have the option of selling beer from here. So okay. you had to distribute or not do it at all. Okay. That's the only way you could make a living. Wow. Most of breweries now don't do a lot of distribution just because there's not much money in the distribution part of it. Mm -hmm. Unless you're somebody like Sweetwater or yeah. Monday Night or yeah, a lot of them get into big, big guys. Yeah. Most of them are now opening up brew pubs. Yeah. That's the new model yeah. of having food, having mm -hmm. other people's alcohol to come in so you can do events. Yeah. Like we can do events, but I can't bring in outside alcohol. Mm. I can only do my beer, which okay. is one of the Georgia law. This is what got us started was the, the winery. So planting grapes, these are almost ready. These will be ready in about two weeks. These are a variety of muscadine called Carlos. This is most of your muscadine wine is made from this. This will be a white wine. Okay. And it makes a fantastic, fantastic wine. Nice and sweet. Very, very sweet. These are super sweet. I love muscadines. <laughs> oh, they have a very distinct flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Some of these are mm -hmm. some of the best grapes ever. I mean, they're just they're fantastic. Yes, they are. Those are good. I remember when we first moved down here from Pennsylvania, we had muscadines in the yard. That's when I first got turned on to them. I'd go out there picking them when they were ripe and purple. It's like, oh man, I fell in love with them. And we actually have some of the purple ones over here in the front. So that's why I thought at first that these weren't ripe yet. I was oh, like, no, these oh, are I, I said, oh, they're a little green. I don't want to grab one nope. and try to try to eat one. These, these look a little green and sour to me. But these yeah. are these are what that local people nice. call scumpernons, which is basically a variety of muscadines. Okay. And they're fantastic. But in the they are. Ones, I mean, they are nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. Got a little tartness to them in the back end. This is where the magic happens for us. Make sure they got, yeah, they pretty much got all the lights on. Nope. <laughs> That's all the lights right now. That's all out of range. See, this has got the Realtree camouflage on it also. So we partnered up with Realtree. Okay. This has their fishing camo on it, their fishing pattern. Okay, yeah. So in these tanks, used to, these two tanks here used to be at Sweetwater. Now, oh, okay. They started out at Sweetwater, then they went to Terrapin, and now they're in Omaha. Ah, oh, that gets some history behind those tanks. Yes, sir. Some good history. 
So the system is a four vessel system. You're welcome to walk up on whatever you want to walk up and do and film, you're welcome okay. to. Um, in the brewing okay. process, basically what you do is you go in and you take grain, you crack that grain and make flour out of it. You add hot water to it to get the sugars out of it. From there you separate it from the seeds. Then you boil it and sterilize it and add hops to it. Then you cool it off and add yeast to it. See a lot of com a lot of computerization nowadays. It's just like with everything nowadays, yes, it's all gone to computers. I wish some days we didn't have it, but oh. I'm glad because it's a fantastic. I mean, it's it, a state of the art system. It is until it messes up, until and then you're up, then, then you're messed and up. And then we're like, man, I wish we had an old school system. <laughs> exactly, right now. So. exactly. I mean, it's got its pros and cons like it does. everything. It does. It's a nice facility. Thank you, sir. That is nice. Fermentation going on in several tanks. They'll be brewing again tomorrow and the next day and the next and the next. So they'll be brewing all the way through Saturday now. And hopefully when you come back, they'll be brewing on Saturday so you can actually see some of the process. Yeah, that, that's why I was hoping to, I was going to ask if they were going to be doing any of it. Of course, I'm going to, we're going to. We're actually going to be brewing Nada. Okay. On Saturday. Because cool. we're actually going to. Well, I know I'm gonna the same out, so it kind of all blends together when we edit it together. So, but yeah, uh, definitely cool. So cool. Only, I, would, I would love to see the process of uh, brewing the We only do cans nada. and kegs, so we have our own canning line out of. Oh, you do your own canning we too. We do. Okay. We do our own canning. It's based uh, based out of Colorado. It's called a Wild Goose system. Okay. This will do about 800 cases in an eight-hour day. This is what you're seeing now. It's called depalletizer. So you set a pallet of cans in it. The cans will come through. They run through the system. They sterilize them. They come out. They purge them with CO2. Then they fill them full of beer. And then after they fill with beer, they come under here. And the top is automatically dropped on it. it comes under here, pushes it out, and goes through a chuck, and that crimps it and seals it up. Washes it off. Comes out the other side. You have two people packing them into the cases and getting them ready to go on a big pallet oh. which goes on the distributor's truck. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and taste some of these beers now. Come on. We'll try a bunch of them. All right. Sounds good to me. I know that's what everyone out there is wanting to try. Uh, that's what they're staying tuned for is to sample the beers and uh, see what they're all about. We have a lot of people that come in during the week because we're real close to Providence Canyons. Mm -hmm. So Providence Canyons is a big, big tourist area for, uh, and especially for a lot of people out of Florida. Yeah, it's the uh, it's little, the, the little, the little, little Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon. The nickname's always yep. been Little Grand Canyon. So we get a lot of people. We have a sign strategically placed just as you come out they're like man i've been hiking all day and there's a brewery 10 yeah. minutes from here what <laughs> and they got food so yeah saturdays well we get them all week but especially mm -hmm. on saturdays yeah we're cool. open every day except sunday all right so, cool we have all a right. lot of a lot of hikers come in here and they'll have their dogs with them or their kids with them and they'll have a beer or two and have a big old time and laugh and yeah. cut up and, yeah it's nothing better than stop uh finishing up a hike on a hot summer day than a nice cold beer. I know. So we're gonna go ahead and try a few beers. So kick back, open up your favorite beverage, pour your favorite wine, mix your favorite drink, and join me, Drinking Across America, as we get into the tap room here at Omaha Brewing Company. Cheers. Cheers. All right, all you drinkers across America, joining me, Ron Antonori, as we come back at you with Drinking Across America here at Omaha Brewing Company with my good friend, Robert E. Lee. And we're going to sample some of the beers that this brewery is known for, giving it its namesake, you know, the Omaha Brewing Company, small town, big beers. Let's just see how big these beers really are. So I see we got uh, a couple flights here. We got, uh, these are your core four Sorry. right here. Four, four beers. Yeah. All right. This year is round. first one right here is the Not a Banana. If you tell people about a little bit about this beer. Not a Banana was our first beer we released. It's uh, Hefeweizen, which is one of my mm -hmm. favorite styles. We tell everybody that it's oh, yeah. uh, a Not a Banana because over a fire one night discussing a name between the brewmaster and my partner and my wife, 
Uh, it was an argument about somebody that kept asking if I wanted another one of them banana beers. And the <laughs> brewmaster said, there is no bananas in it. But there were some ugly words crossed over yeah. there. So my wife said, that name's going <laughs> to stick. It's going to be called Nada Banana. Nada Banana. So it hints the name Nada. There is no bananas in it. It definitely it has, has a banana smell. smell. It definitely clove, does. But we try to enhance those esters in that beer to make it more of a banana smell and flavor. Mm. But it's a fantastic, pure German style beer. Oh, yeah. Everything in it is, oh, that is clean is wonderful, and crisp. including the fresh water that comes out from under the aquifer that we're standing in. I was just going to say, you can tell that it's brewed with some good, clean water right there, man. It's just yes, a clean, crisp beer. Uh, comes along very clean. You can see the Hefeweizen, so it is a little cloudy uh, mm -hmm. because of the wheat that's used in it instead of just your regular grain. Um, very smooth, very refreshing. Comes in at a good 5.3%, so it's not too heavy. Right. Uh, give you plenty of time to, you know, kill a six pack on a uh, nice hot Saturday afternoon out here at the brewery. Uh, so I do like that. And I'm a big fan of Hefeweizens. Me too. I, I was a fan, I was drinking a lot of Hefeweizens, Kolsch's, and Pilsner's when I was down in South Florida uh, because, you know, they're, they're perfect for warm weather. Uh, a lot more lighter than your stouts and porters that more lend towards the cooler weather. That is good, man. I'm going to have to put that down for a second. Uh, let's see what the second one is that we've got here. This is a uh, Hannah Hatchie. Uh, you actually said it right. It's yeah, rare Hannah, that somebody does. Hannah Hatchie. I guess because I came down here uh, for a little while. I grew up in this area. so. And uh, what, what style is it, actually? This is an IPA. It's 6.6% .6 alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a super juicy, flavorful, uh, grapefruit, a lot of fruit tones, oh, a little yeah. bit of pine. Definitely uh, smell the grapefruit. best hops that we can get to put in it, and it's uh, absolutely one of the most favorite beers that, yeah. for people to come in. It, There's you know, this whole generation of IPA drinkers. Um, it's a huge craze, and I think it's here to stay, obviously, but mm -hmm. we, uh, we had to create a really, really, really good IPA and a brewmaster did a fantastic job. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, you, you, it's got the hoppiness where it's not too overly hoppy, which me personally, I'm not into the hops. I don't like to bite into a pine cone when I'm drinking a beer. Uh, but this does come off as a nice, smooth, more citrusy flavored, citrusy uh, scented beer, uh, which I'm more geared towards. I like the citra hops more than just the piney. Uh, this is very smooth uh, for coming in at, what is it, 6.6%. Uh, it definitely doesn't taste like it. No, sir. Uh, it goes down a lot smoother than that. Um, and I would definitely recommend it. I'd give it two pints up uh, for all my IPA drinkers out there. If you're ever down here in, in Georgia, Alabama, definitely give the Hannah Hatchie IPA a shot. It is their signature IPA. And uh, there's a reason for it. There's a reason it's a top seller. Yeah, that's another good one, man. Ah, hate putting the beers down, but <laughs> the job job requires the me job to go requires, on, man. Uh, somebody's got to do <laughs> it. Somebody is a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, Berliner Weiss, and uh, what is its name? This is called Doc Dweller, after me. I was going to say, uh, was it named I'm, after my, you, Doc? My nickname is Doc, and I like to sit on the dock and have a nice cool sit beverage on the dock of the you know, bay. in the summertime, so I sit on my dock, so hence the name Dock Dweller. Yeah. Uh, this is our kettle sour blender vice, and yeah. it is fantastic. It's true to the German style also. This was created by Brewmaster because there again, there's a tremendous amount of people that want sours. Uh, we do some variations of sours, but this is our basic core brand sour called Dock Dweller. Mm. And much like IPAs, I'm not much of a sour drinker, but this one, and I'm not just saying it because I'm here at uh, Omaha Brewing Company. This is actually a very smooth drinking sour. Uh, you wouldn't even know it. Uh, when, you first, when it first hits your tongue and your taste buds, you get a little bit of that sour notes to it. But uh, as it sits in your mouth and you enjoy it and then you swallow, it's very refreshing. It doesn't come off as being citrusy or soury like a lemon or lime. And I actually enjoy that. That is that, that, that makes it makes it very refreshing. And uh, coming in at 4.4 percent, you can definitely sit out on the dock of the bay and enjoy, enjoy several of these on a Georgia or Alabama summer afternoon. That's for sure. Yes, sir. 
Uh, next up on your core brands, we've got the uh, the Nat Knocker, and it's a very light looking beer. Uh, this is a true German lager. Uh, we this is a some people call them pilsners, but it's a lager. All the ingredients come from Germany. Everything is in it except for the heart and soul, which is the water from Omaha. Mm -hmm. This is a true to German style lager. It's a super popular light beer. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of people coming in looking for domestics, and so there was a huge demand for a lager. So, again, true the German style, where our brewmaster was trained, that, had, that made this recipe, was trained in Germany, and he did a fantastic job. And we have a huge following of Nat Knocker. It's named Nat Knocker because we had some uh, folks here that when they were putting our boiler system in, they had a lot of gnats going in and out of the ears, and they didn't know how to get rid of them, so we wanted, they wanted to name a beer something to get rid of the gnats. Yeah. So as it says in the video that we do, uh, it may not get rid of the gnats, but it won't make you care quite as much. So. Yeah, they, they, they must not have been from around here. No, uh, they were from not, not being used to the, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> that explains not being used to the gnats in the south. <laughs> but uh, we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Very light smelling. Uh, typical... Light Hellas Lager. Very clean, very crisp. Definitely, it's like a, uh, what they call in Europe, a pub style beer, which you can drink more than just one or two when Absolutely. you're sitting down at Absolutely. it. I mean, this, this is, you know, you come in, you enjoy a hot summer day, come in from the heat, kick back, get you a gnat knocker, knock the gnats out the way, and <laughs> get ready to enjoy your afternoon. Definitely a very good beer as well. Uh, so far, man, haven't had a bad beer from any of these. You can definitely tell the quality ingredients, local ingredients, the, the water definitely makes a makes a difference uh, you know coming from natural spring water right outside you said yes sir. Uh, it definitely makes a difference you know beer is you know 90 percent water so you you definitely want to have good water going into it because that's going to enhance the rest of the flavors yes. coming out of your beers we send our water to be tested every month send it off and they're always like we don't know where omaha george is but do not change your water profile it's perfect for beer <laughs> So well, that, that's blessed. good to hear, man. Very so, blessed. so ho hopefully it uh, lend over into the wine making when you get into doing that as well. That'll I know soon. that there's no water That'll involved in that, but uh, no. may may maybe the uh, chemicals in the land will uh, help the musky dines and the, and the grapes a little bit. The, the wine that we have made from our um, winemaker has just been fantastic. We had great reviews of it. We can't wait to get our winery open yeah. also. Yeah, I, I can't wait to come back and check it out for all of my wine lovers out there. Yes, sir. Uh, so we got some more. Uh, let's see, we got a, a grapefruit blonde. You can tell by looking at it, it's a little hazy, a little cloudy. It, tell it that it's, uh, I'm saying white grapefruit was probably used in it by looking at That's the right. color of the uh, beer. Yeah, it looks like it's very light, very refreshing. Uh, a little bit about this beer. This is a creation from our son, Hayden. Uh, he wanted to come up with a, a blonde that so many people kept asking for. So this is one of our son's uh, creations that has done very, very well for us. It's been super, super popular. We have a lot of people that enjoy drinking blondes, which are usually mm. traditionally pretty light. Yeah. And you still get the citrusy flavor there. You get that distinct grapefruit flavor from it. Yeah. So for those that are not a, specifically an IPA person, but they still like the citrusy base, yeah. This is a fantastic beer for them. Yeah, like, it definitely yeah, has I don't a great fruit. Seven or eight percent, or yeah. six and a half percent alcohol, something a little lighter. This what does this actually come in at? Actually, I think it's four and a half. I have to okay. look and see myself. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot and uh, see what it tastes like. Mmm. Oh yeah. That doesn't even four taste like a seven. beer, man. That just tastes like pure grapefruit juice so right there. It does come in at 4.7. 4.7? 7. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, that is very good. That is very grapefruity. You can definitely smell the grapefruit in it. Uh, the grapefruit does have the overpowering taste in it. Uh, very light, very refreshing. I would have thought that it would have come in at more of like a 4.0, 4.2 maybe. Uh, 4.7 still pretty good. Uh, most fruit-based uh, 
blonde ales will come in at between four and five percent so this is about average for that so you know don't be scared away because it is a little higher on the ABV scale um, it's very smooth drinking very refreshing something that you want to drink on a hot summer day spring day early fall um, if you're in a grapefruit I definitely recommend it. I could probably see this actually being uh, used in a cocktail for a uh, beer mosa. You know, we make a lot of beer mosas here. Most of those are based with uh, the Hanahanchi or some of the pale ales. Mm -hmm. and this is going to be along the line of a lighter one, so a lot of people will actually add grapefruit juice to it or orange yeah. juice to it, and, and again, making a beer mosa. Yeah, I, I, I can see that because that, that is very, very good along those lines. Next up is one of my favorites. Uh oh, this is a little bit, little bit darker here. So yes, sir. Uh, I don't know how I feel about trying this in this uh, summer heat in the South, but uh. <laughs> so one of the reasons this was uh, concocted, and that is, it's this is Blackwater Wit. Black Blackwater Wit is basically a wit beer. Um, it's made with uh, some chocolate malt. There's no chocolate mm -hmm. in it, but the chocolate malt gives it that dark color, gives it some great flavor. But oh, it's yeah, still it definitely a super gives light it a little scent. Beers. It's only a little over 4%. Really? So all year long, we have people that come in, they're like, well, I want a dark beer, but I want it to be too strong. Yeah. So Blackwater Wit is absolutely one of the That's one thing I always around. tell people. It's like, you know, I, I love stouts. I love porters. I love the yeah. dunkles. But being up here where it's, you know, 80, 90 degrees, year almost year round, you don't want to drink the dark beers when it's 90, 100 degrees outside. They are more for fall and winter. Uh, right. But to have something dark and light at the same time, awesome. you know, it, it, it like it, it knocks out both categories right there for you. And it's definitely got that nice little scent to it. Taste a little bit of coffee. You do, that's from the chocolate malt. I was gonna say in a little bit of chocolate there. Yeah. It's like a stout light. It's like a light stout. You know, yes. if they had if, you know if they had if they had a stout light, this would be it. <laughs> um, very good, beer, very flavorful beer. Um, I know a lot of your summertime beers, they don't have a lot of flavor to them because they are so light, you know, so they're more geared towards just kind of keeping you cool and refreshed. You can actually drink this in the summertime and you get the full flavor of a stout and porter beer along with the low alcohol content of your lagers and Kolsch's and Hefeweizen's so that you don't have to just drink one or two beers that's six to eight percent alcohol. You can drink three, four, five of these in an afternoon when you're sitting with your buddies, you know, enjoying a band, enjoying the food trucks. You know, this is definitely, for dark beer lovers, I would recommend it. I would give it two pints up to all you uh, stout and porter lovers out there following me. Uh, and you know who you are because I love them too, man. But uh, in the heat, I just can't drink them. But this, I can drink every day. That is good, man. That is some good beer. It's like you've done this before. <sighs> man, I'm a trained professional. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. Remember that, children. And you shouldn't be watching this if you're under 21 years old anyway. But if you are watching it, because everyone knows we all sneak out when mommy and daddy are in bed and we turn on the cable channel or get on YouTube. But hey, I've got to give it out there. Do not try this at home, kids. I am a trained professional. I've been doing this for a long, long time. <laughs> but now that we've got all the technicalities out of the way, we'll go ahead and jump into the next beer. And this one seems to be named after you as well, Doc. Man, you seem to be well, a popular, for someone that wasn't a beer drinker, uh, you've got several name, beers named after do, you now. I do, I love beer now. Like I said, when I opened a brewery, I was not a beer drinker. I yeah. was a red wine and vodka yeah. person. And oh man, this is definitely don't even me get over. me started on the vodka. <laughs> But that's another show entirely. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, what we have our here, first show at our I, distillery. we will. I mean, we will definitely be here. So you definitely let us know. Uh, this one right here, this is the Peach Dock. And as you can see, it is almost see-through. I mean, it is almost as clear as water. So I'm thinking that this is a very light uh, lager. Uh, this is actually a Berliner Weiss also. OK. And it is. A little bit, it is super, super 
light, and we had to have yes, something yes. with peach in it because we are in the south. In Georgia. It is Georgia. And it's Georgia. And we love us some Georgia peaches. Definitely. And you can definitely smell the peaches in it. The only thing other than just having peaches, which I did see, and we're going to have to try that here in a little while, is the peach sweet tea lager. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to give that a shot a little bit later on. Yeah, this is this is very sweet. Um, got a very good peach flavor to it. Uh, you can definitely tell that it's light. Um, very good, very refreshing. We have a lot of people that enjoy the flavored sours. Mm -hmm. You know, most of your just straight sours do really well, but anytime you have a flavor, whether it's peach yeah. or, or different, we use different flavors also. We actually have one that's a um, blue raspberry dock dweller. Ooh, we really? also have a strawberry kiwi uh, sour mm -hmm. that's fantastic. So. Blue raspberry, that's because that's, that's me. It's like I love, I love fruit. Now, I'm not a big f sour fan, like I've said before. It's like I just don't like biting into a lemon. To me, that's not refreshing. But if you can put lemon, orange, kiwi, watermelon, blueberries, blackberries into the sours and take away a little bit of that bite, that turns a lot more people onto it. And it makes it more mass appeal, and which of course that's what every brewery wants. You don't want to just appeal to just one little small segment of right. the beer loving you know society. You want everybody to love your beer, or the majority of people to love it. And this this is actually a real good, refreshing peach wisen. And now we've got wave shaper. Wave shaper. Wave Shaper Wit. This is a wit beer. Again, pretty light beer. This is a beer that we make for the local community. Uh, it started out as uh, based out of Columbus. It's done very, very well for us. It's super popular. Uh, it's definitely a beach beer, but it's also any kind of water beer. We named it after the machine in Columbus that makes the waves for the rapids in Columbus. Okay. Um, they wanted a super light, nice, easy drinking beer, and it has turned out to be crazy popular. It's one of the most popular beers in the tasting room and in the market. We just released it uh, in Columbus in the spring. We just released it in Alabama last month. Mm -hmm. So it's doing very, very well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a nice little clean scent to it. A little higher alcohol than definite German Dutch style. Definitely you can German you, you can definitely tell the German taste to it. It's it's got that German style of brewing. You, you can definitely tell that. Very good uh, for all the German beer drinkers out there. Which I mean, if you if you love craft beer, you love beer. You've got to know about German beer because I mean that was like the birthplace of beer. Uh, good draft craft brewing comes out of Germany. You know, um, it is some of the best. You know, you've got your Hefweizens, you've got your Kolsch's, you've got, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, a lot of uh, lagers and your Dunkles and all, and they're, they're very good beers. And this definitely has an old, old world flavor to it. You, 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 you wouldn't even know that it's brewed in Omaha, Omaha, Georgia, you know. <laughs> we try to stay true to the old styles the best we can. That is good. That is that is something that you would probably find at a uh, German beer festival, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very old school brewing style. That is good. Can we pause for a second? I'm going to do <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> All right. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. Huh? In three... Two, one. All right, welcome back, all you drinkers across America. Ron Antonori, your host of Drinking Across America, coming back at you from Omaha Brewing Company, small town, big beers, and I'm here with the owner, Robert E. Lee, known as Doc, here around their local area. And we're going to go ahead and talk more about some of their beers, you know, some of those big beers. And it's not just so much that they've got big beers, 
These are big flavored beers, like this one right here. This is the Country's <laughs> Sweet Tea Lager. Now, how did it get its name? This was named for the for Country's Barbecue in Columbus. We did a collaboration with them. They uh, provided us with some tea, and we put this lager together and making it's only served here in the tasting room and at Country's in oh. Columbus. Oh. So if you want some of this sweet tea lager, you've got to come down here to Omaha, Georgia, to the brewing, to the tap room, or to Columbus, Georgia at Country's Barbecue. And I gotta tell you, it's got that sweet tea smell to mm -hmm. it, a little bit of lemon to it. Yes, sir. Does it even take, is there even any beer in this? I oh, mean, be yes, honest sir. with me, man. Yes, be sir. honest, be honest. Yes, sir. Because it doesn't taste, it doesn't smell like it. It's a four and a half percent alcohol. It's very, very popular here and in Columbus. Oh man, yeah. I can see why, because uh, <laughs> it doesn't taste like there's any alcohol in this. Tastes like a glass of sweet tea. Did, did you guys give me just regular sweet tea, Not or is time. there really the sweet tea lager in this, Rob? Come on now, you can this tell is, me. This is really, really, really <laughs> This is really the, the lager. Beer. This, this is, is really it. the beer. Well, I see a little bit of a head on it, so it may just be the beer. But it definitely doesn't <laughs> taste like a beer. So if you're not a beer drinker, but you like sweet tea, you live in the South, which hey, you know, sweet tea is the official drink of the South. That's right. Beer is the second official drink of the South. <laughs> and of course, right behind it's gonna be, you know, whiskey. But uh, we're not gonna get into that right now because we're talking about the beer. But this sweet tea lager right here, I guarantee you, you're sitting out on the front porch, you're gathered around the bonfire, you're out on the fishing boat with your buddies going ahead fishing on the lake, on the river. This is the beer that you want. But if you want it, you got to come down here to the brewery. That's right. Get you a growler. Get it's it filled growler, up. Take it with you and take it to do, the do, lake. Do, or take do, it do to you the... can it? Do you can it for uh, no, sale? Sir. No, sir. Yeah, no, you got to get Not a growler. Got to get a growler. So get your growler, get it filled up, take it out to the lake, take it out to the river, you know, the bonfire, wherever you are with all your friends and family. You definitely want to try the country's sweet tea lager. Thank it's you, sir. Mm -mm good. Oh, man, that's some good drinking right there. I still don't think you put any beer in that, but uh, we're going to find out. We'll, 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 we'll find out later, I think. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and jump into the next beer here, Robert. Uh, this is the Get Peachy. It's a uh, peach tea lager. Yes, sir. Again, oh, man. Once again, we, we, and Georgia. Got to have those peaches. The Georgia peaches. Everybody knows about them Georgia peaches. So... It's definitely, it's got that peach scent to it. Oh yeah, peachy tea. You, you see it's got that peach. nice little tea coloring to it, man. It looks just like you're about to down that peach tea at, the, at, at, at your favorite restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah. The peachy hits you immediately. And then on the back, back trace, you get the, you get the tea. Black tea leaves, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, black tea leaves and peach. <laughs> I just thought that that country sweet tea lager was my favorite. Oh, no, 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 no. If you in the South, you in Columbus, Georgia, you in Alabama, you got to try this peach sweet tea. Is this available outside of the tap room? No, sir, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. <laughs> so, all this you beer season. drinkers, this just gives you more reason to come on down here to Omaha, Georgia, just south of Columbus, you know, Fort Benning. We got Fort Benning up there. It is the largest military base in the United States. It's the home of the Rangers, the home of the Airborne. I'm sure you get a lot of the military guys coming down here. Lots, and, you lots. know, a a after they get done with some of that PT training, I'm sure they're ready for some of this peach sweet tea uh, lager. Are we, they not? <laughs> we get them from all over the world. Oh, and weekends, I'm sure they love it too. We have a tremendous military following. Yeah. And I appreciate all of them for their service. Well, we all appreciate our military, man. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be enjoying the freedoms that we enjoy no, today sir. here in the United States. So we like to give a special salute to all the military around the world. Whether you're serving active duty, you're retired, you served for this country, we give you a salute. 
Absolutely. each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts here, Drinking Across America and Omaha Brewing Company. So we're going to go ahead and go into our next beer. You know, it's a Blackberry Watermelon Blonde. Oh, what was the inspiration of, the of this? Uh, again, we, um, you're right in the middle of South Georgia, mm -hmm. Southwest Georgia, and obviously between the blackberries and the watermelons, there again is a flavor of the South. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to create a blonde with some unique flavors and something that somebody would come in like, man, I need something that's different. I'm, I want something that's light, but I want something that's true to the Southern flavors. Yeah. So yeah. besides peaches, blackberries and watermelons. Blackberries are hard to beat. and watermelons, man. I mean, that makes you think of the South, that's for sure. Uh, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but I moved down south when I was 13 years old, so I consider myself a Southern. Uh, I grew up down here, uh, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi area. So uh, it's definitely got the. Uh, the watermelon actually overcomes the blackberry on the scent. I, I, I probably would have gone with a watermelon blackberry, but uh, <laughs> let, let's see about the flavor, because the scent's definitely backwards. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh God. Is that even a beer? <laughs> uh, that, that, yes, sir? That's a blackberry watermelon uh, colored water right there, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. Uh, that, that, that's way too light to be a beer, way too light tasting. Uh, very blackberry. Uh, it's got a great combination of blackberry and watermelon. Still, uh, it's 4.7% alcohol. So it's still, yeah, right around what you expect from your blonde berry ales, which are between four and five percent. Uh, very good. I mean, I'm a big fan of blueberries, blackberries, watermelon. I mean, anyone from the South is. I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> this is what you grow up on down you here. You're up picking blackberries uh, and yep, making a blackberry exactly. cobbler and mm -hmm. going out in the fields and finding the right watermelons and cutting watermelons yep. in the heat of the day. Man, Nothing that like is. That is the perfect Childhood combination memory. too. I mean, it's so light. I mean, if you can see, that's almost translucent right there, how light that is. Uh, I know people that probably like Bud Lights or Coors Light, they wouldn't like the berry flavor of it, but I would recommend it to them just for the fact that it is a light beer. And this would be a good way of turning people over to craft beer. Yes, sir. Uh, people that are more into your basic top three, you Bud Lights, Miller Lights, Coors Lights, Mick Ultras. Uh, this would definitely turn some heads, I do believe. So is this available outside of the, the taste room? Just in the taste just room? Just in the tap room, so, tasting room. <laughs> so, so see guys, again. this is another reason why I'm drinking across America for you. Letting you know about all the different beers, all the different flavors coming from the different regions of this country. So that you, whenever you're out traveling, and Stop you by, you, you never know where you're going to be, man. If you're in the Columbus, Georgia area, if you're in Auburn, Alabama, Auburn University's what, 45 minutes 45 away from minutes. here. Yep. You know, you're less than an hour away from Auburn University, and I know everyone knows where Auburn is. You may not have heard of Columbus, but you've heard of Auburn University <laughs> and uh, War Eagle. War but Eagle. <laughs> that's what they say. Well, I see we got an orange and brew, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, <laughs> that might be a little Auburn related, but I don't want to. Don't want to get college football on everyone right now, because <laughs> it runs deep down here in it the sure south does. now. <laughs> but uh, this blackberry uh, watermelon blonde is definitely a two pints up. I, I, I guarantee you're going to love it, guys. Now we got our fourth and final. This is something uh, a little bit different. Say it's got a little bit of a pink kind of a haze mm -hmm. to it. Uh, this is a strawberry kiwi Chattahoochee Kool-Aid. <laughs> and and where did that come from? <laughs> Obviously, we live on the Chattahoochee. I mean, you're only a stone's throw from the Chattahoochee yeah. here. So Chattahoochee Kool-Aid is one of our series of uh, sours with different flavors. Mm. And this, again, is based on our blender of ice stock dweller. And this one has some different flavors. It's got kiwi and strawberry in it. It's still 4.4%. For these people that really, Ooh. sours are, are a big deal to a tremendous amount of the population, which I'm one yeah. of. 
and this is one of my favorites. By Sours far. are actually starting to take over the, they're, they're the new IPA. Uh, you know, three years ago, IPAs were the big thing. Every right. brewery had to brew nothing but IPAs because that's what everybody wanted. Now everybody's turning away, no, not so much turning away from IPAs, but it's not as popular as it was. <clears throat> Sours are starting to overtake IPAs um, in the flavor profiles and a lot of the brewing. Um, and even if it's not so much a, a soured, um, even the fruit-based um, lagers, ales, yep. and blondes are um, so overtaking an IPA. Yeah, lots. you're getting a lot more fruit. It's, 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 you know, it's like beer progresses in like waves. You've got your little, you know, you had your IPA, you had your lager, you got your, now you got your sours and your fruit-based beers. And uh, this is definitely, uh, Definitely different. Uh, strawberry, kiwi, Chattahoochee, Kool-Aid. So is it actually made with Kool-Aid? Yes, sir. It is. It is. What 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 flavor? Guess what it is. It's um, kiwi, so kiwi. And strawberry. Ah, the strawberry. <laughs> oh, okay. So strawberry, kiwi comes from the Kool-Aid. That's right. That makes sense. You can definitely smell the strawberry and kiwi. That doesn't even come off as a sour. Once you add those combinations of flavors. Yeah. Of course, in the back, it's not so much sour, you get a little tartness. Right. Just where it kind of dries the mouth a little that's bit. That's from the acidity. And that's the, exactly. And, but it's very, I mean, 4.4%. This is a summertime drink right here in the South. Uh, if you're not into the sweet tea or the peach sweet tea, You've got to love Kool-Aid. I mean, everybody grew up, grew up drinking Kool-Aid. Everybody loves uh, Kool-Aid. Throw some Kool-Aid in with beer, you can't go wrong. It's like throwing bacon on anything that you eat, man. I mean, everything That's gets right. better with bacon. Everything drinks better with Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is definitely a... Uh, is this available outside of the no, tap room? Sir. No, 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 sir. no. Oh, so all four of these are just available in the tap room, except for the Country's Sweet Tea Lager, available only at Country's Barbecue in Columbus, Georgia. So if you're in Columbus, Georgia, go to Country's, check out the Sweet Tea Lager. If you're down here in South Georgia, come by the tap room, check out the Sweet Tea Lager. And you definitely want to check out the Peach Lager as well. You know, hell, maybe old Doc will be here. He'll have a drink with you. Oh, he'll enjoy it. You know, he'll tell you a little story about, you know, about some of these beers. So, you know, always pop open your favorite drink, pour your favorite wine, mix your favorite drink, and join us at Drinking Across America. And as always, stay safe. Salute. Cheers. Till next time. This is your host, Ron Antonori.